G'day ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Draw with Jazza. I'm Jazza and today we're going to be colouring in this picture using coloured pencils. And it's going to be a bit of a tutorial on some things that we can do to make coloured penciling colouring in look good. This picture was drawn for this channel by the amazing Christopher Hart, so make sure to check the link in the description or click the annotation on the screen to go to his channel and check out his video tutorials and his fantastic books. So before we get started colouring in that image, I'm going to get started on a blank piece of paper with just some pencils and go over some of the basics. First things first, we want to make sure our pencils are sharp. So I have here a little cup and a little sharpener and I'm going to make sure my pencils are sharp. Now I am using these, these are Derwent Studio pencils and uh, there are lots of different kinds of good pencils, I think Faber-Castell are a little more budgety as well, um, but Derwent's are very easy to come by, they're very popular and they're everywhere, so I recommend them, especially if you're a beginner or intermediate artist, it's just like a nicely accessible uh, sort of coloured pencil. So first things first, we want to perfect our stroke and one of the things that makes coloured penciling look quite unappealing sometimes is that sort of rushed you know, colour in look that we get from just kind of scribbling across. But if we focus our attention and really take our time with a, the pencil on a bit of an angle, we can feel the softness of it merging into the paper and we can get a really nice tone. Now we can see that there are unbalanced bits in the tone, so we can actually go back and lightly colour in the slightly lighter areas so we get a much more even sort of tone. Now the other thing to keep in mind is once you're dark, so if I draw this dark area here, uh, to go lighter is next to impossible. There's really not much I can do without kind of undoing the effect of the smoothness. So uh, it's better to keep a focus on doing it right the first time and building it up. See there, even with the erasing, it's always going to be there, especially when we start mixing colours. So just try and be a bit careful. Now when covering large areas in particular, it can be quite difficult to not have that strokey sort of look, right? But what I tend to do is instead of moving from the wrist, instead of angling there, I actually tend to move the whole arm. So instead of colouring like that, I colour like that, especially with the wider strokes. So I tend to just graze the pencil across the paper, get a really swift sort of motion, and then we go back and go over the bits that are a bit lighter because that always happens. And then the other thing I like to do is kind of go over the same thing very lightly on another angle, just over the whole thing. And what that does is it disrupts the, uh, the motion of the lines from going in one direction. I tend to turn the paper a bit. So as you can see, I've just come in on two different angles, just very lightly, and uh, it just gives the whole thing a much smoother tone overall without there being an obvious line direction. So the next thing we're going to talk about is mixing colours. So for example, I'm going to get more of a purple colour, make sure the pencil is of course very sharp, and I'm just going to start on one edge here, and I'm just going to start with the purple and slowly blend it in. So it's going to be darker at this end, and I'm just going to slowly lighten the pressure that I have on the pencil as I go in until it's next to nothing. And I just want to really have a gradient from the purple to that blue. And then again, going in on a slight angle here and turning the paper, doing the same thing, a slight angle. And as you can see, very quickly, we've made a nice little gradient there. Okay, now the third thing I want to talk about is being strong. You don't want to be afraid be nice and strong once you've got the uh, the essentials done. So once you lay the base down, I can go over again and really be solid in the areas that I want to shade. So these are all things that can kind of apply when you're doing the overall image. But uh, first of all, you want to make sure your strokes are nice and neat and we keep a, a generally clean tone, not a line sort of tone like this one. Uh, the other thing you want to remember when mixing colors is to keep things fairly light and layer them as you go. And then the third thing that I mentioned is not to be afraid of being nice and solid and dark once you've got the, the basics and the foundations laid down. Now, speaking of having the foundations laid down, we're now ready to go into this piece. And it's quite a simple piece, but we're going to pre-plan each color as we go through it because it's not a simple matter of using one pencil. If you want to get a really nice, effective color pencil look with gradients, uh, and with interest in the piece, we're going to have to use several colors for each single color area. So for example, this guy's jumper, this shirt, 
these are the colors I'm gonna use. I'm gonna start off with a slightly lighter turquoisey blue. Then I'm gonna to go to that mid-tone blue that I used in the earlier part of the video and the purple I used in the earlier part of the video for the shades. Now, uh, as you can see, I've got three colors here and they're all slightly different. And that, in my opinion, adds quite a bit of interest. It's much more interesting than having a flat color. We start off with our flat color, which is just this lighter blue. And I'm gonna go through and really gently shade the whole area, keep it in the lines. It really feels like you're in primary school when you color with uh, color pencil again, because it's like all about keeping within the lines. So as you can see, I've laid down the foundation light color Right, so we start off with a bit of the highlight color and then I'm going for the mid-tone and I'm gonna start adding the gradient. But this is gonna be a larger area sort of gradient. So I'm gonna start very lightly and bring it in to be slightly darker in the mid, mid, middle. And then as we go along, even darker and then much darker especially towards the edge here. Now I don't want to lay it on too thick because remember that uh, color pencils don't necessarily mix very well, especially when they're laid down heavily. So we just want to incrementally add. Now, um, as you can see, when I started off with the lighter blue, I kept the tone as even as possible. And that just lays for a good foundation. Again, not too thick. You don't want to press too hard when you lay down your foundation but it just makes it easier to add things on top of it and it also makes for a really nice sort of base. So as you can see, I've added a bit of a blue gradient into the arm and the torso area. I'm just gonna add a slightly darker area under this guy's chin. As you can see, I've turned the paper so that the direction in which I'm shading is a little more in line with where my wrist kind of follows. So there you can see I've added a little bit of a shadow under his chin and that gradient to the right there. And then I'm gonna use this purple, this darker purple as my shadow instead of black. You really, really wanna stay away from using black as a shadow. You wanna find a complementing, uh, but slightly contrasting color in my opinion. And just really do minimal area. So just that very edge there. And then slightly under his chin. Now, if I want to darken the tone, I can always get my blue and just go over it slightly darker in the mid-tone area, like here, just to emphasize the blueness of it. And I'm fairly happy with how that turned out. Now, the next thing I'm gonna talk about is mixing colors to get a different color. Now, often I've been caught with a small pack of colored pencils and want to get a skin color and there isn't an ideal skin color. I mean, to be honest, even in large packets of, uh, of ideal colors, that it's hard to come across a skin color. You might come across something like this, um, but this one in particular is actually not ideal because as I'll show you here, to actually get that color to show effectively takes it a lot of really hard pressing. And when you do that and it lays down this really thick layer of not much color, if I wanna add shading on top of that, it's really hard to, oh, that's a bad example because it's such a vivid color. If I wanna shade it, it's hard to mix colors on top of that to shade it like browns and things like that because it, it ends up being a bit blotchy. See, it just doesn't look very smooth. It's hard to see on the camera because it's not a great resolution, but you get the idea. So I actually recommend starting off with much more vivid colors and slowly building up that tone. So for example, this one, this quite a, a bright orangey red, I'm just gonna really lightly go over all of the skin area, really lightly. So the pencil is barely pressed against it and it's just gonna give me this really light pink tone. Now this isn't the tone that I'm gonna end up with, because I'm gonna mix in some other tones to get the skin tone I want. And then I'm gonna do the shadows and the highlights. So we've just got the hand and the head. And now that I've got one layer on, I'm just gonna turn it and get a different angle in the stroke like this. And as you can see, it's already building up a nice, flat, smoother color. And that alone is a very light pink skin color is much better than uh, what I was messing around with there. Okay, so I've got my base layer. I'm just 
gonna go a little darker under the hair. I've got my base layer. And then the next thing I wanna do is add a little bit of brown. So this is the color I'm gonna use. It's called terracotta and it's a bit, bit of a red hue in the brown. And I'm just gonna very lightly go over the whole thing again. Very lightly. Just to add that slightly uh, desaturated brown look to the skin. Gives it a bit more of an olivey color instead of just the pink, because the pure pink isn't necessarily the best look. And again, on another angle, and then add a little more darkness. And as you can see, that already gives it a bit of a shadow. So building up the colors very softly, starting with vivid colors and just pressing lightly, I find much more effective uh, than starting off with lighter colors and really thickening it. So there we go, I've got the base down with a slight shadow there. And if I wanna add a gradient, uh, I got, I'm gonna use the same colors and build up the strength, but very, very gradually and mix them in the same sort of amount. So if I wanna add a bit of a, a, a gradient around this character's head, that makes it look a little more round and pop a bit more. I'm just gonna go around the edges and under the hair area. And just kind of bring it in and then don't go in too far and spread the gradient because we already have our base in the middle. So we're kind of just adding shadows now. So I've added the red and then with this terracotta color again, so just these two colors, I'm just mixing this red and the terracotta very lightly to get the skin color I want. Now, if I want to add further shadowing to this, I'm going to use a dark brown and I want to be pretty minimal with it and just go under this hairline again and just around the very edges. So less is more, you don't want to go over the top because the more brown you put in, the more it changes the entire tone of your skin. And there you go, that is how I mix skin colors. Now I'm gonna go through the whole piece in stages. So the first stage is gonna be laying down the base colors and I'll fast forward the process so that you don't get bored. Alrighty, so I've laid down the basics and I've gotten the overall uh, flat tones done and kept them as flat as possible and tried to not be too heavy with how I've laid them down. So uh, the trickiest bit for me so far has been this barrel. So as you might have noticed, I did three different angles and it was difficult because it's a larger area, uh, but I wanted to keep a smooth tone before I get to the gradients to add some depth. So that was a bit trickier. So I did those angles and tried to keep things as smooth as possible. The next thing I'm gonna do is add uh, some mid-tone sort of shadow, and then I'm gonna add some darker shadow. So for example, I'll go through the hair with you. As you can tell, he's a blondie. So I started off with a quite light yellow and then I'm just gonna go for this more rich yellow and add the gradient from the back to the front. Now, I've uh, kept a fairly consistent sort of lighting direction uh, and I'm just gonna be treating the light source as if it's coming and emanating from this toxic acid that this Dennis the Menace type character is spilling. So I'm adding the darker tones. You can see gradienting out towards the front and a little darker under the bottom of the hair there. Okay, and then the next thing I'm gonna do is have a small small sort of shadow area and I'm gonna use this orangey sort of color. And I'm just gonna to go towards the very back and fill that in, make it darker. Um, but as for the rest, I don't wanna go over the top with the shadow. So I'm gonna go under the barrel because that's gonna be shadowed. Notice that the, the orange contrasts but complements nicely 
with this strong sort of yellow. I'm just gonna very lightly shadow this in. And I don't wanna go too much over the top with this. So we just kinda wanna pick the select areas to uh, accentuate. This back area here can be quite shadowed though because it's very much at the back. So there you go, I've done the hair and I'm gonna do the same thing with other areas. Now you might notice right here on this edge, you, it's barely visible, but I've gone very slightly over the edge right here. Uh, so I'm just gonna get my eraser. And there you go, I've just fixed it up and there are other little bits throughout, but the point is if we go over the edge, it's not the end of the world because we're not being too heavy with our strokes. So because it's being built up gradually, when little bits go over the edge, it's much easier to clean up with an eraser than if we were doing dark, heavy strokes. So like I said, I'm now gonna go throughout the rest of the piece and add some of the mid-tone shadows and then the darker shadows. And the darker shadows in most cases will have a bit of a, a contrasting but complementing color. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen, I've finished the uh, basics of the shading now. And the last things I wanna do are, are just some finishing touches to really make the finishing piece pop. So I want to add a very slight uh, acidy green highlight to the left edge of this character. Uh, and to do that, I'm gonna get this eraser and try and get a, a sharp end of the eraser, an unused edge, and just very lightly go over the left side. And as you can see, I'm creating this light, little area and I'm not going to do more than that I'm just going to make a really light area and then on his arm do the same thing a really light area uh, also on this edge of the barrel like that and I think that's enough that's all I want to do and then I'm going to get this really acid green make sure it's really really sharp at the end and I'm just going to quite strong go over just that edge. Okay, and do the same up here, just the edge that I've erased. And you really don't wanna go in too far. I'm just gonna go here, and it just adds that sheen of highlight and shows that there's this really sort of green glowing acid that is pouring. And it adds a bit of a, an ambience to the scene as well. So you can see how very quickly that's kind of added a, a bit of interest to the piece. And then the very last thing I'm gonna to do to uh, add a, a bit more interest to the piece is add a bit more of a glow around the acid. So with the same color, I'm just going to create a, a slight edge following around this acid like this, right? So just at a distance from the acid. So there's blank white between this light line that I'm drawing and I'll do it on the inside as well like this uh, and you want it to be fairly light and then you want a gradient out from there so with quite wide long strokes really stretch it out and what that does is creates a glowing radioactive sort of feel in a really subtle way and it shows that there is light and energy emanating now, as you can see it's quite difficult to uh, not accidentally show these little lines and strokes as you do it because I'm keeping it so light. So one thing that I do is I vary the angle of my stroke constantly. So very lightly. Kind of scribble 
softly and vary the angle as you go. And gradient out, this is just on the other side. Vary the angle and you want to build it up so it's a little darker, closer to the line. And when I say a little darker, I mean a little darker. And really spread it out so it's you can almost not see where it starts fading and isn't there. And very quickly and simply, we've added that glowing effect to the piece and we've got the finished product. So I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial on using colored pencils and uh, that you've taken a few tips and tricks. One thing that I do recommend is to not leave too many white areas uh, in areas that are supposed to be solid color because I used to make the mistake of gradienting in from the color to a mid white and have that the highlight but you actually want to make sure that color is fairly consistent throughout the piece and it really makes it pop out. Anyways that's it for now ladies and gentlemen thank you for joining me. If you like this drawing make sure to check Check out Chris Hart's videos on his channel, again link in the description. And until next time, ladies and gentlemen, I will see you later. Thanks for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my videos. You can download the reference files from this tutorial by clicking the link in the description. And remember to share any art, animation, or game you make on newgrounds.com. Until next time, see you later.